Hi there, good afternoon everybody. Uh, welcome to the What's New uh, with BigQuery uh, session. Um, my name's uh, Dave Nettleton. Uh, I'm gonna be one of your uh, presenters today. Uh, let's get the right direction of the clicker. Um, with me, uh, 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 two uh, co-presenters, uh, Daniel, who's uh, from uh, Discord, one of our fabulous customers. Ooh, and has fans already. God, all right, I didn't even get, I didn't get a woo. Um, and then uh, Thomas uh, Talius, who uh, leads the uh, engineering team uh, for BigQuery. And then myself, uh, Dave Nettleton, um, I lead the product management team uh, uh, for BigQuery, and I'm uh, very excited today to walk you through uh, what's new with BigQuery. Um, I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna cover two main sections of uh, uh, material. Some is announcements at Next, but I also want to take a little bit of the time to kind of go through, uh, just highlight some of the releases that uh, from earlier in the year as well. Um, so, you know, just starting with a little bit of background and the context for how we see and think about BigQuery, how our customers are using it, and the, the success we see in the market with it. Um, you know, for many, many years, and I've been very fortunate through maybe 20 years or more of my career, I've had a chance to work with a lot of customers around how they can take best advantage of data and AI. Um, uh, you know, this might be from the old days, the sort of data warehousing, um, databases, traditional ETL type systems through the area of um, uh, uh, data lakes and to the Hadoop and Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, but behind all of that is this urge and this need from customers to derive more value from their data. What, one of our customers once put this to me really well and really super succinctly, which is, I only need to do two things. I need to make money and I need to save money. And in doing both of those things, depending on where you are often in the business cycle, there's different pressures from the business, it always comes back to being able to use data and AI uh, to help generate um, um, uh, that value for your business. And we see consistently customers who are able to do that are able to generate much better um, uh, business performance than those who still struggle with some of the challenges uh, of using data and AI. So, you know, we have the privilege to hopefully then, then build a product with BigQuery to really simplify this and make it easier for, for customers. Um, I guess I couldn't get very far in without talking about uh, generative AI. You know, it's been a very uh, hot topic uh, for the last year. Um, you know, and th this has really sort of accelerated a lot of these conversations around data and AI. People have been trying to get value out of data. They've been using AI for many years. Generative AI is adding a sort of a net new set of capabilities. It's one of those rare occurrences when there's been a step function in the algorithm capabilities with the sort of the transformer capability and the ability to handle more ambiguity um, in, for example, language. The scale um, of processing power and the algorithms through the super powerful TPUs and GPUs that are available. And then also just the scale of data for training, right? So those three things have combined into this really interesting step function uh, that has made um, a new set of uh, possibilities um, uh, uh, super interesting for customers to, uh, to explore. So whether that's you know, data analysts looking to be more productive in finding insights in data, whether it's uh, customer support calls and conversations and uh, interactive chatbots, many, many uh, organizations are exploring how to take advantage of generated by within their businesses today. Um, so for us, you know, we just wanted to reflect for a second on why, why are people choosing Google Cloud today for their data and AI journey? Um, and uh, and how, is, you know, how have we thought of how generative AI uh, fits within that? Well, first and foremost, we think about this sort of unified data foundation, right? We want to make it super easy to capture and manage all of your data, make it very easy to bring different algorithms to bear on that data, and really operate it um, uh, at scale. We, we want to make it simple so that you don't have to make lots of copies of data. Back in the old days of databases and data warehouses, you'd pull data out of a database, you'd ETL it into a particular format for a, 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 a your schema, and then you would then you know, ask the questions you already knew, and if you had new questions to ask, there'd be all these complicated processes that you'd need to go to. So we really want to kind of simplify those processes, make it easy for you to um, run on the data wherever it resides. And then, and then finally, you know, Generative AI is going to be, I think, transformational for many businesses and business processes. But for us, so far, interestingly, the way that we're integrating it has been sort of very iterative, right? A lot of the investments our customers have made in their data and AI cloud platform, their, their data lake, their AI lake house, you know, if building on all of that with BigQuery, some of the capabilities that we're launching that I'll talk through, you know, they just build on those foundations. You know, customers have been on this journey for many years, and we're going to integrate into that a set of capabilities to help, uh, to help them. Um, and then, of course, we build this all um, on uh, super scalable um, uh, infrastructure, take security very seriously. We want to make sure that all, all data is secure, private, uh, et cetera. 
And so where does BigQuery fit in? You know, we really see that as at the sort of the heart of our data and AI cloud. You know, uh, thank you very much for uh, all of the, uh, the customers and the users today. I love hearing the feedback from you know, tens of thousands of customers who are using the product uh, every day, um, running billions of queries across exabytes of data. Their scale and the numbers behind uh, the product are really, truly phenomenal. So thank you very much for all of the, um, uh, all of the work that you've been doing uh, with uh, BigQuery. Um, you know, we're building on, you know, more than a decade now. I was just looking at the release notes. The first release note for BigQuery was 2011. Uh, we announced joins, but, you know, so we've moved on a little bit since then and a few other uh, capabilities. Um, uh, but if I go back over the time, like, you know, we've been on this little journey for a while of moving beyond just, you know, SQL queries running over structured data, right? Like, we've moved to different types of programming languages, we've added geospatial capabilities, uh, stream analytics where you can stream data in and have queries uh, uh, available to, you know, instantly query that data. We've reached out to other clouds through BigQuery Omni. Um, we've extended to data that's outside of the, sort of the traditional data warehouse management with uh, Big Lake. Um, for customers that want to share data, Analytics Hub, we've been building ML into, the, uh, uh, in, into BigQuery uh, for years. So, so lot, lots and lots of innovation to build on. And one thing I do want to highlight, because you know, this is something I, I, it was one of the things actually that attracted me to come, come work at Google, um, was just some of the underlying infrastructure is, is very, very unique. Um, you know, and there's three key parts, right? We have a, this very, very fast, uh, scalable file system called Colossus. That means we can write data into it really, really quickly. That sits behind things like the ability for streaming, for example. We can stream data in. Data is instantly available for query because we can write it quickly, read it immediately. We have Borg, which is our massively scalable uh, compute architecture that lets us scale our query processing engine, Dremel, uh, to really large scale, and we can scale up and scale down uh, dynamically on that. Um, and then, of course, powering that sort of serverless architecture, that compute storage separation, we have uh, the Jupyter network, which gives us sort of petabit connections uh, between our data. And when you take these all together, it means things like, you know, you can stream data in at just really large scale and have it be instantly available for query. You don't have to batch load and, as you bring data in. Data infrastructure, you know, we, we, we rack huge, like tons of disks are racked every day, right? Like we, uh, disks fail all the time. You never see any of that, right? Like just our underlying infrastructure and reliability means that, you know, you can run your workloads very reliably. Um, uh, efficiency. Um, you know, I talked a little bit about that uh, compute storage separation. It means we can do some really interesting things. You know, you don't have to think about scaling in units of VMs, um, right, that are sort of isolated units of compute. Um, you, we have the ability to allocate resources to reservations. You can sh uh, scale and share them. But we also can do some really interesting things, like if the capacity isn't being used in one of your reservations, and if you let us, you can, we can go share it with other reservations, because we have this, you know, this large pool of compute that we're optimizing over. Right, so some very, very powerful uh, capabilities um, under the covers. Okay, so let me talk and go through now um, some of the uh, announcements that we have. So this was mentioned in the keynote, so very excited to introduce uh, BigQuery Studio. Um, so one of the pieces of feedback we had from customers while, is that while you know, your data to AI journey um, is, uh, is, is very powerful, um, but you know what, we'd actually like to do um, a, a few more things with that, and also can you make it a little bit easier for us, please? So a few big things that we're announcing here is number one, we're gonna put a notebook experience directly inside of uh, BigQuery. So that journey from data to AI for folks who might wanna use Python, for example, is super simple. Um, and beyond just sort of the user experience integration, uh, we also wanted to make it easier to operate and uh, at scale over data. You know, often if your data scientists are working with data, they might take a copy of their data out of their warehouse, load it into uh, their notebook, work on a subset of the data there, build their algorithm, and then you know, figure out about production, productionized, uh, running it at scale and then running it in production. So we're also introducing uh, a data frames API directly over BigQuery. So now uh, for uh, anyone who's working with you know, the uh, common APIs that, um, uh, like so for example, Pandas, uh, will now uh, take that data frame um, uh, API and we'll translate it to, uh, on the back end to a query in BigQuery. So now you can just run petabyte scale uh, data frames jobs directly over the data without even needing to take it out of uh, BigQuery. 
So very powerful capabilities to let you now um, start to um, explore and operate on data. And then, of course, the other key part is once you get beyond experimentation, you want to go into production. And so we wanted to bring much more of the sort of centralized source control and revision history capabilities that you might expect in a traditional sort of DevOps environment uh, into the experience. We had acquired a company a couple of years ago called Dataform um, that gave us the sort of the key capabilities for this. And so now, you know, we can integrate with all of the kind of the key CICD uh, workflows uh, that you might have. Also integrated in the experience, uh, powered by Dataplex, is data uh, profiling, data quality, uh, data lineage, um, uh, which will, you know, as you start to build these pipelines, understanding the, the flows of data, what's changed, what's the quality, what's the lineage, becomes more and more important. We're going to uh, integrate that all into the experience as well. So this is a, a, a big announcement for us. This is now uh, going into uh, preview. I'm excited for, for you all to start to, to use that. Um, I mentioned, you know, sitting behind um, uh, uh, the BigQuery Studio uh, is Dataform, helping you now sort of model and build uh, pipelines, um, giving that um, uh, uh, integrated CI/CD workflow um, and orchestration experience uh, over your data. Um, the data profiling, data quality, data lineage capabilities, those are actually all going into uh, uh, GA uh, now, so I'm excited to see uh, those uh, being used. Um, beyond the sort of the data to X AI uh, building experience, another big area we've been investing in is being the sort of the managed lake house uh, with uh, Big Lake. So, you know, the traditional way that a data warehouse is built is you'd have a, you know, a query engine, a metadata layer that would deal with table definition, security, uh, et cetera, and then uh, a storage layer. And that's sort of delivered as a vertical kind of data warehousing stack. <laughs> So a key thing that we've been working on is to split the stack apart a little bit and take that, that, uh, date, that metadata layer uh, and break it apart as um, uh, 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 something that we call uh, Big Lake. So now this lets you define metadata, define security, define tables in a single way. And, that, and Big Lake will be able to reach out to data that's in formats like uh, uh, Parquet originally, and then now we're also introducing uh, the ability to query over um, Iceberg, uh, Delta, uh, and Hoodie. So you can take data that's in those common formats, you can register it uh, within uh, the Big Lake metadata and create tables uh, as part of uh, Big Lake um, that are now available to all of the processing engine of uh, BigQuery. So very exciting for customers who might have chosen a particular open format and they want to work with and take advantage of the scale of BigQuery, uh, they can do that now. And again, this is powered by that compute storage separation that I talked about earlier. You know, we can store and manage uh, data separate from compute and take advantage of the network to, uh, to do that analytics. So in addition to that, um, you know, the other key element of this is that you can bring different types of processing to bear over that data, right? So if you want to use Dataproc or Spark, you can then process and come over, the, over Big Lake data that way. So excited at, uh, to announce that we, we've extended the formats that are available. Uh, we're also introducing um, fully managed uh, tables uh, in Iceberg. So not only can you read data from Iceberg, but we will also write. So if you want to write data to these tables, we will take care of uh, transacting and writing that data uh, on, uh, for you. Um, announced earlier in the year um, um, was something called object tables, um, which lets you take uh, data that's in, for example, uh, Google Cloud Storage, so you might have um, one example is, is call center records, call center transcripts. You might have a set of call center transcripts that are sitting in, um, uh, in GCS, um, and you might want to do um, annotations on them, and I'll talk a little bit later about how you might apply LLM, LLM algorithms to those. Um, but uh, you can create a table, uh, add a column that is, um, and make it an, uh, an object table by adding a column that's backed by a, a bucket of data that's in uh, GCS, and you can operate and secure and manage that in a single way um, with, uh, with Big Lake. So we really want to be able to reach to all these different types of data so you can have a single consistent way um, uh, to manage that. 
And then we're, we're integrating this with um, other parts of uh, the stack. So for example, um, you can uh, take algorithms that are in Vertex AI, apply them to data that's in object tables via Big Lake, um, uh, fine tune models um, um, by pointing your document AI to the data that's in BigQuery, um, and then taking that algorithm and then productionalizing it. So lots of, lots of integrations um, between the products uh, to support this. Uh, BigQuery Omni. So big, for BigQuery Omni, this is the ability to reach out to data that is in uh, AWS uh, and Azure. Again, you know, the principle is we want to be able to manage your data in a consistent way. So you'll be able to reach out to data that's in um, other, uh, other clouds. We just recently announced expansion to uh, Ireland uh, and Korea. Um, and uh, two new capabilities that are going into preview um, uh, announced at Next are uh, the ability now to join across clouds and also to create cross-cloud materialized views. Um, so you can now have a single, single query spanning um, your Omni and uh, GCP regions, uh, making it very easy now and easier to sort of share and operate across those. Uh, just under the covers, you might have seen not too long ago that we announced uh, some Salesforce data cloud integration. Um, that actually is powered under the covers uh, by Omni. So you don't see that as we expose it, but if you're in Salesforce or if you're in BigQuery, we make it very easy for you to interoperate between your different data sets, right? We want to make it easy to sort of secure and manage all of your data, but we also recognize that some of your data is going to be in other cloud providers and in other applications, like other SaaS applications like Salesforce. So we want to make it as easy as possible to connect to that data, to manage that data, um, and uh, operate on it in your uh, environment. Um, so, Analytics Hub. So, this is something that we um, announced um, a little while ago, um, and it, uh, you know, we, if you're working in an industry where you have suppliers or a, a supply chain, um, or you want to share data, sometimes within your company, but often across companies, like, how do you do that? You know, we, we want to make it easy for you to share and collaborate on your data with other companies in a safe and secure way. Um, and we have, you know, uh, thousands of organizations currently sharing petabytes of data across those organizational boundaries, right? Um, you know, again, you might ha you have a lot of data and we'll help you manage the data within your organizational boundary, but when you want to collaborate with other organizations, that's something that is um, a very interesting opportunity as well. So Analytics Hub uh, lets you now sort of lets you curate and manage um, across uh, those boundaries. Um, and then we're also excited to, uh, to preview uh, data clean rooms. So this is a, a particular set of capabilities. So you might be sharing data sets across um, organizations, and that's great so long as you're okay with sharing, for example, the contents of that data. But if you have data that is private or uh, and, or, or you don't want to share the details of it. You know, you're, you're comfortable with letting customers run sort of aggregate analysis on it, right? Like, um, like, it, like only showing groups of you know more than 50 and summations of that. But you want to protect individual uh, privacy. Um, data clean rooms give you an environment where you can agree through policy. To, like, I will share these tables and I will give you this join key. Um, and in fact, that join key might come from a third party, and then you share it with another company, and you agree that you can collaborate on that data and then the results across that. So, you know, often we see this in, you know, um, uh, third, third party cookies, you know, that are, the, uh, are going away. And so sharing of data and identity between organizations is becoming more important. But customers want to be able to do that in a secure way that doesn't affect the privacy of their individual customers. So now they can create an environment to share across two organizations. They can take data that is, you know, individual data, um, provide a third party join key, and run queries over that in a completely safe, secure, private way. Um, um, and, and then we, we provide algorithms like k anonymity that says, look, and you know, we'll only show results if we can be sure that they're anonymous to a factor of, say, 30-odd people. So there's no way to be able to individually figure out um, uh, where a piece of data came from. So excited that that is now uh, in preview. Um, and then one other thing that we're going to announce, so this is a roadmap. So this is coming uh, later in the year, uh, so continuous real-time analytics. So these are, think of them as sort of continuous queries, streaming queries, where you can write um, a query that is running all of the time. Uh, data is written into the system. The query is always responding to that. It might be things like tumbling windows, et cetera, where we're able to keep a query running even as new data is coming 
in and continuously outputting the results. Those results can also be output to other systems like Bigtable. One common pattern we hear from customers is, I'm doing a lot of my analytics in BigQuery, and then ultimately my serving happens through uh, Bigtable or, for example, uh, or Vertex AI sometimes as well. Um, and what we want to be able to do is power that um, under the covers uh, so that um, you, know, you don't need to build those pipelines. We can, with continuous query, just with a single query now, um, export data directly into something like uh, Bigtable uh, or Verdex um, so that um, you, you know, your, your, your serving layer can be always fresh and up to date. So exciting to see uh, what customers are able to do with that. Um, Okay, second section, intelligent. So um, we announced um, uh, as part of our sort of uh, platform today, expanding Do It AI more broadly within um, Google Cloud Platform. Excited to bring a number of those announcements into uh, BigQuery. We'll have uh, Code Assist, uh, um, uh, Natural Language Assist, uh, 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 SQL Completion, um, and all of this will be all, all sort of a, within a, a, a highly secure Google uh, Cloud environment. We'll operate over your data in a secure way, provide uh, really great um, assistive capabilities uh, over your uh, data and algorithms. Um, uh, for BigQuery ML, I mentioned earlier, we've been using, had BigQuery ML built into BigQuery uh, for a number of years. And uh, we uh, are extending that with a, a number of capabilities uh, to uh, uh, call out to other algorithms. So we had some custom algorithms built into BigQuery. We want to make it easier to reach out to other algorithms through our inference engine. Um, so you can go now to pre-trained models you might have in custom compute or, uh, or, or Vertex. Um, and we're integrating also with uh, LLM API so that you can now um, generate uh, um, call LLM APIs and do things like transcription um, of text, sentiment analysis on text, uh, et cetera. Um, another roadmap thing that we uh, are announcing is uh, vector embeddings and indexes. Um, so uh, often when you're dealing with um, um, uh, some of the training data uh, or custom data to your organization, you want to fine tune models or, uh, um, and you, you take an embedding, which is basically a sort of a, a mathematical featureization of your, of your data, and you then might want to you know, run that over, say, you know, 500 images, and then ask, you know, hey, what images are similar? Well, so we'll make it easy to create those embeddings and then create an index that will then have capabilities to do things like clustering, et cetera, on those. And then you can use uh, these BigQuery vector indexes to sort of really power your system of record behind some of the uh, ML workflows that you will build. And then we'll integrate with, so for example, uh, Vertex Feature Store and Matching Engine so that you can um, uh, serve these uh, really, really uh, quickly as part of your uh, workflows. Um, I want to run quickly, uh, just in the last couple of minutes before uh, Daniel comes up, uh, run through just some other core platform announcements that we've had over earlier in the year, uh, just for uh, c uh, completeness. Um, earlier in the year, we introduced a, a number of um, uh, new ways to sort of manage and think about overall price performance and total TCO. We introduced three editions in BigQuery. We introduced an auto scaler, and we introduced a new uh, format of storage for um, compressed storage, giving more choices on, um, uh, on how to manage uh, your overall uh, TCO, depending on the different workloads that you have. As part of that, uh, auto-scaling was released. So this is an auto-scaler that lets you now run a query in a, a capacity-based model, will scale the query up to meet the needs of your workload, and then as that uh, workload dies down, we'll uh, scale back down uh, capacity. And then we'll just bill you for the, um, that uh, capacity that we've scaled to. So it's fine-grained scaling and then um, uh, coming down uh, as well. We want to make it as simple as possible so that you don't have to think about managing uh, capacity as you're running uh, workloads. Um, lots of improvements on performance we've been working on uh, over, the, uh, over the year. I put some examples here. Many of these you'll see our goal is to simplify it, so we do things under the covers like adaptive file sizing to deal with different size of data sets, um, um, dynamic concurrency control, so lots of things that we're just continuing to work on under the covers to improve uh, price performance. Uh, another good core capability, uh, table snapshots and clones. Um, so you can have a table, a data set, um, and you might want to take a copy of that so that you can then uh, think about backups or, or, or reading off of it, or you might want to clone a set, of, and that those are uh, read-only 
only replicas. If you want to then um, uh, uh, snapshots, if you want to then uh, clone a table so that you might want to do some um, A-B testing or production testing, uh, you can create a writable clone um, as well. So these are two great capabilities that were uh, announced uh, earlier in the year. Migration services, um, making it easier to move uh, various workloads from a range of different um, uh, t uh, targets to BigQuery. We're, we're enhancing our migration capabilities with uh, LLMs so that we can simplify those uh, last minute, uh, uh, those last mile uh, translations. You saw some demonstrations of that for databases in the keynote uh, this morning, hopefully, and just making it easy for you to interact with this through um, an API. Uh, and then finally, um, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, partners. So, you know, we really believe in having a really cohesive, uh, rich partner ecosystem. So very excited to continue to grow um, and work with those partners. Um, one thing we've been excited to do, um, which is now uh, generally available uh, just a little earlier in the year, was actually build within big, the BigQuery experience a partner-center experience. So making it easier to discover partner integrations, uh, having uh, customized getting started experiences, and we'll build on that in the future with better in-context uh, in um, experiences uh, as well. Uh, so I think with that, that's my section complete. Daniel is going to take over for five, ten minutes, and then we will take a Q&A. Daniel, welcome. You had Sounds a, great. You had a woo <laughs> Thank you, Dave. I'm continuously impressed by the iteration speed on BigQuery. So many cool things coming out this year. Yeah, I'm Daniel. I come from Discord. I represent the data platform team. Very happy to be here. So, oops, did I go the wrong way? Cool, so a little bit about Discord. We were founded in 2015. We are a place where the world goes to hang out. It's text, voice, and video communication, and we have 150 monthly active users. Some of the interesting data challenges we face as a company is that it's a, a real-time platform. Texting and voice, it's very quick, so we need to be able to react to data insights very quickly in order to be successful in our mission. An example of this is that we banned 300 million spam accounts last year. So the goals of our platform, let me look at, okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah, when we set out on our journey with, Bi with BigQuery, uh, we set out with three goals. The first one is self-service data platform, because Discord, we believe in small and mighty teams, providing high leverage to our customers and stakeholders. And in the data platform, that meant data governance, data quality, observability, and all of the tools people need to operate their own data sets independently from a central team. Scalability, this is a way to unlock growth without us going back to the drawing board every couple times. And multi-purpose, as we've seen, the uses for BigQuery has grown every year with the expansion of Gen AI. But even from the beginning, we knew that we needed analytics, business intelligence, ML, experimentation, causal inference, and a multitude of different requirements in order for us to meet these needs. An example is we built our own reverse ETL system at Discord, and now BigQuery came along and released it themselves this year. So the circumstances and impact, what was basically the beginning of our journey with BigQuery? It started in 2019, actually right before I got to Discord, when the team had reached the maximum size of the Redshift cluster. So we knew that we were gonna to have to pick a new Redshift cluster, but costs had also become a problem. So they went to first principles, and they arrived at BigQuery. And honestly, I'm very thankful they did, because I took over the data platform team in 2020, two months before COVID hit. So we hit 500% increase in event volume in a two-month window, right after we went on BigQuery, and it, it really uh, was very useful, very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, also uh, data quality and data governance. Data governance is a key piece because every year the compliance landscape becomes more complicated, and historically workflows were blocked by a centralized team, and we had coarse gain, coarse-grained data governance controls, 
which meant that frequently we would just lock people out of data or delete it. Um, so this is where we started, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the journey. Uh, uh, here's our architecture. So at the bottom of this diagram, I think, is the critical piece, which is our self-service data platform. This is where we've realized that what stakeholders need in order to, to accomplish their goals is they need to operate independently within the company. So for us, that means providing observability, data quality checks, metadata management, as well as automated data, uh, data governance policies. So there's still centralized places within the company that define the process for data governance, but when they actually go to do their day-to-day -day work, policy automation comes out of the box. So the benefits and value that we've learned through our journey. The first one was actually just continuous integration and deployment. Some things continuously deploy. Other things, we have human steps along the way, especially with data governance, ensuring that there is verification before things go to production. But the ability for people to deploy rapidly uh, has really uh, increased the speed and the quality of data throughout the system. And scalable, we've put BigQuery through the ringer a couple of times in the past couple of years. One time, we scaled from 100,000 slots to 170,000 slots in uh, one day. Shout out to Zayb Nathani. Uh, she was on the other side of that call when we informed her that we needed 70,000 more cores like at that moment. And then most importantly, the ability for us to scale back down. So once this great need was over, we could scale back down and not be paying, paying for more than we needed. And then lastly, data governance and quality. Honestly, I see it more of a, as an ecosystem around BigQuery. BigQuery is like the, the foundational piece, but um, yeah, DLP, Dataplex, and now a lot of it's going directly into BigQuery with BigQuery policy tags has allowed us to automate policies and implement fine-grained data governance policies, making it easier for data to be accessible across the company. Whoops. So yeah, lessons learned. <laughs> it's been quite a journey, but what we definitely learned is that BigQuery does scale efficiently. And workload management is a key piece of us achieving uh, cost and performance. One of the important ones I like to always call out is uh, we build execution projects uh, to dedicate BigQuery slot reservations, and you can attach BI engine to, to dedicated ones so that you can give low latency query access and uh, quick responsive business intelligence. But based on your use case, you can allocate the resources, and I think that was a critical piece. Uh, lessons learned is that self-service does unlock teams. Teams are just waiting. When we provide them the observability tools, the policy automation, it, it, it was quickly adopted. Data governance is much easier when everyone contributes. This is something that no matter how many tools we've built and uh, how many systems we've put in place, some of the highest leverage value we've had is through education across the company and um, everybody participating so that we can have a robust privacy compliance and data governance uh, system. And lastly, data ownership increases collaboration and data quality. So as we pro uh, provided the tools for people to claim ownership of their data sets, um, it's allowed our stakeholder teams to have 10x leverage across the company sharing their high quality data products to other teams. And that's just a little bit about our journey on BigQuery.